Um, what should a future FEC owner look at when choosing his attraction mix? mix for an FEC, um, one of the first things you need to do is get some core attractions. Core attractions are things that have been around more than 10 years, usually more than 20 years, have been proven money makers, have been proven draws to a facility. Uh, one that everybody's kind of familiar with, bowling, has been around for 60 to 80 years. And it used to be more of a league bowler. Now it's more of a recreation type experience for the whole family. Getting that diverse family market to come to the facility is the key of the success of a facility in total. You've got to have something that draws them to the first time to come to the place. Once you have those core attractions, and usually today you want to have at least two or three, uh, then you can start to build off of that for what we call secondary attractions. Secondary attractions are things that are usually a little less expensive to invest in, also have a pretty good proven track record of, of being uh, a money maker. In many cases, it's an up and coming thing that has drawn a lot of excitement to facilities. So it becomes somewhat of a draw itself and it packages with the other items. I mean, one of the things you're trying to do with the facility is not just have one thing, but a combination of things that I can package together for a single price, either as a multi-attraction ticket or as a pay one price, which will draw your revenue per person per visit up dramatically. Years ago, you know, one of the attractions that we kind of considered core that I, I'm not sure is core today because of how much space it takes, which was roller skating, uh, it took 20,000 square feet for just that one attraction. So it kind of pushed out all the other things. And yet a lot of the roller skating, at least here in the United States, centers thought that generating three or four dollars a head was a win. Uh, today, the average should be around $15 to $16 a head per facility per visit. Now, anytime I can drive that revenue up above that for that individual for the visit, like saying, okay, I've got a two hour unlimited for 30 bucks, I've nearly doubled their spend right off the bat for that visit, and they get a lot broader uh, range of things they can do. In other words, they didn't just get to play mini golf or didn't just get to bowl, they got to do a whole variety of things, VR, bumper cars, you know, laser tag, a whole variety of things. Their experience is better. Their value for the visit is better, but your economics is dramatically better because now instead of having to get another body in to get that extra revenue from making it up to 30 bucks, I've gotten that out of each person in that group. So driving that per spend per visit up, what we call the per capita spend, is really key to the profitability. You're gonna find at any facility or any business, especially the FEC business, you're going to have a baseline cost that you've got to cover for your rent, your overhead, your basic management costs, your labor costs, uh, your utility costs, you know, those type of things you're going to have to do. And once you get beyond that cost to operate, that's where your profit comes in. So the higher I get my per caps, the deeper I'm getting into additional profit, which I can use either to pay myself or to expand the facility in the future, which is key to the long-term success of the business. So Dutch, what would you say that they're the main, the three main attractions and the three secondary attractions that are the most popular right now? Interesting question. I've given whole seminars on just this one topic. Uh, the list of potential attractions, I think, has grown to over 150. The core attractions, there's only about maybe seven or eight. Uh, the core attractions historically, uh, and depending on indoors or outdoors, have been uh, miniature golf, go-karts, laser tag, bowling, uh, which now can be mini bowling, but I'm not sure it's as much of a draw. Uh, there have been some places that have tried to use theaters. Of course, now with COVID, that's become a bit of an issue with social distancing. Um, what else is there? Uh, there are things, those are really the primary traffic generators to a facility. And then from that, the secondary things are things that are exciting may have been around less time but still have some good draw factor um, you know the VR that's one of the big things right now that's a hot topic because it's very exciting uh, we've seen some good success with ours at our facility even through COVID um, and then there's other things out there that goes from axe throwing to ropes courses arcade you know most people would consider arcade the one of the half twos of the core attractions the thing that doesn't necessarily make it a core attraction is if I put an arcade by itself, it has no drawing factor. People aren't going to go to just an arcade anymore. They need something else to get them to the facility 
And then the arcade can be one of their top three or four money makers in gross and net because there's no labor involved for the most part to do it. So I can use that as one of the things that I would have. And I would say, yes, that's a core from a necessity, but it's not a core from a draw. Things like the VR that's got its own following. Um, you know, there are other things out there like the ropes courses. Um, I'm trying to think of, there's some simulators, there's some uh, motion simulators, the XD theaters. Uh, there are some other things out there that are, are good attractions to add to the mix, batting cages, bumper boats, bumper cars. Um, you know, those are other attractions that can fit. Some of those are outdoors, some of those are indoors that will help expand out the offerings that I'm giving to my customer base. Is like, is there a trend like uh, this, uh, this year's, this thing is very popular and then the other thing is very popular and they, it just spins around and come back, comes back or they just all fit a, a, they, you know, their place and it's for the people to choose what they like. Well, that gets into what we call the third tier. The third tier items are things that may seem exciting, but you don't know the longevity of it. There are other attractions out there, and one of the one I like to point to is actually laser tag. I first saw laser tag come out um, in the latter 70s, early 80s, and it came out in the United States, and it flopped miserably. And that it was a chain, it was a franchise only type thing. It went away. It actually went to Europe muddled around for a few years and then it slowly started to take off in Europe and eventually came back to the United States. And today it's one of the indoor core attractions. So occasionally they do come back, but most of the time, you know, it's kind of, things can be faddish. A lot of it's got to do with, is it a repeatable long-term attraction? You know, the, like the laser maze, once you've done it, you either were good at or not you weren't going to sit there and practice it. It really wasn't, you know, that high thrill type of piece. Um, you know, other things have changeability, um, you know, in the laser tag arena, you could buy new guns, you could get new features, you play new games, they would reprogram games to be a different scenario. So instead of just shooting another team, you were playing something closer to capture the flag, or you had to all find one guy and that one guy could shoot you and turn you into a team member of him. A lot of different things came along to make laser tag more exciting. But you know, that's really what you got to look at is, you know, if I'm trying something new, is it got a company behind it that's been around that I can get parts from? Is it got a product that I can maintain? Is it going to be difficult to maintain? Is it going to be difficult to service on a day in, day out? Is it going to take a lot of labor to operate? You know, those things you got to be careful about, especially the labor cost, because that's your number one cost at any attraction. And if you get too high labor costs, you can't cost justify having it no matter what the revenue of the game is. You really got to be careful about, will this make the money back weekdays and weekends? so that you're covering your costs weekdays and then you're making that profit on the weekends because you're getting the throughput.